Hello, everybody. This is Brian Ankney with Auto Success Magazine. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your day today to join us. Um, today, my guest is Jim Green from Team Velocity Marketing. Um, if you like what you if you like what you hear today, go see him. He's going to be at NADA if you're if you're going to go. He's he's got a booth. He'll tell you about that towards the end of the webinar. Um, today, we're going to talk about eight ways technology is changing automotive marketing in 2017. Um, and and so. We're going to cover a lot of topics, and, and if you have questions, please type them in as we go. Uh, that way you don't forget your questions, and we'll have a, 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 a big group of great questions ready as soon as we finish. Now, we are going to hold the questions till the end, uh, so type them in as we go. I will, I will read them all to Jim at the end. Um, and if you haven't yet, please, please join Auto Success Webinars. Auto Success Webinars is a group on Facebook, and it's, it's a great place to interact with our speakers. You know, just, you can suggest different topics or, or future speakers uh, to the Auto Success staff. And most importantly, uh, it's a place for you to interact with each other. Um, you know, everybody on, everybody on this webinar and in all of our webinars, um, you know, we cover a lot, of, a lot of really good topics. And, you know, depending on what type, how much you adopt and how much you want to adopt, you know, some of these changes might take you a week. Some of them might take you a month. Some of them might take you a couple years. And so what I invite you to do is share your successes and failures with each other in the group Auto Success webinars, as, as as you all undertake, you know these changes to your business. Now, one thing I, I forgot to mention: how to ask questions. Um, depending on what type of device you're on, if you're on a laptop or a tablet or a desktop, you're going to have a pane on the right side of your screen that says "Go to Webinar." Near the bottom, it says "Questions." Right next to "Questions" is a plus sign. Click that plus sign, and it'll open up a little window for you to type in your question. Now, if you are using a smartphone, this, this is where it gets a little tricky, depending on if it's an Android or an Apple. And if it's an Android, depending on who the manufacturer is, it might work a little bit different. You're either going to have a header and or a footer, or you might have a picture frame that goes all the way around your screen. And somewhere on that picture frame or header or footer is a question mark. Click the question mark. That will open up the, the, the screen for you to type in your question. And then from there, once, once you have your question typed in, this is where every device is different. You might be able to swipe it to get it to go away. You might have to click on another icon, which it, it's an icon. It'll be on the header or the footer or the picture frame. And it, it kind of looks like a desktop monitor, like a little flat screen uh, monitor. So that's, that's how you ask the questions. Please ask as many as you'd like. We'll, we'll cover them all, and uh, we'll hold them to the end. Um, you know, with that being said, Jim, you know, please, please take us away. Great. Thank you very much, Brian. And thank you, everyone, for joining uh, our webinar today. As uh, Brian had mentioned, we are going to look at some topics today that concern what's kind of been changing in the last uh, last couple of years in the way consumers have adopted to change with technology in their personal lives and the technology that's out there and coming, uh, well, it's out there right now, but things that you should be looking for and tools that you should be utilizing literally on a daily basis as you, uh, as you try to grow your business and, uh, and, and things that you can help change and grow your business in 2017. All of you who have signed up for this, uh, I'm sure, have uh, read the eight ways and the topics that we're going to be discussing today. First of all, uh, number one, just how we can go about helping you get better leads and, uh, and acquiring more customers. Obviously, the ability to lower your overall marketing budget will be key as we know that sales will still be good in 2017, but more or less flattened off, and, and that expectation is going to be set for the next couple of years. Also want to make sure that we're talking about and we hear this a lot from our dealers, how we can really work with um, reducing the number of people that we work with uh, right now. There's a tremendous amount of companies that are out in the marketplace, all of which have a lot of very valued offerings. The reality is, though, um, that most dealers are trying to reduce the amount of people that they have, certainly when it comes to data and data sourcing. Fourth thing we're going to talk about uh, today is, is really uh, utilizing big data, and a lot of dealers are doing that. Almost every dealer now is in one way, shape, or form utilizing the gold mine that is their own database, uh, but how to really eliminate the waste that's within that database to make sure you're marketing to people uh, that are your very best prospects, how you can create quality advertising across all mediums. One thing that we've been talking a lot about over the last couple of years, just because of the fact that people are payment-based buyers pretty much through and through, is how can I make sure I have correct payments that meet all of my OEM requirements, my local and national requirements, and my, my state attorney general. 
Most importantly, how do we track people through our process and through the buying process to make sure that we're getting a, a correct return on investment with every dollar that we're spending? And then also, how do we monitor and measure? These are all key things that you do on a daily basis because at the end of the day, um, whether you're a general manager, a dealer principal, an internet marketing manager, a, a director of marketing, a sales manager, if you are in a position where you're spending even one dollar of somebody's money, including your own, you want to know how effective that's going to be because really at the end of the day, that's, uh, that's really where uh, the rubber meets the road. So one of the things we have found and, and what we have been working with our clients on very successfully over the last uh, eight or nine years is how do we manage that bucket of gold that is our DMS and the people that have already purchased and or serviced with us, how do we make sure that we keep in continued con uh, communication with them um, and make sure that we have an opportunity to sell them their next car when they're ready to purchase and or service their vehicle? And I know that you have all seen multiple articles over the last 24 to 30 months on the use of big data. It's, it's prolific in our industry now. It's really a must if you're in automotive marketing to be using data, primarily yours, but also enhanced data from outside sources. So the question is how reliable, when we talk to dealers about this, how reliable is your data considering that most people um, only are about 50% brand loyal as we look across all brands, uh, meaning only about half the people are actually going to come back and buy a vehicle. But most importantly, how reliable is your data in a transient society when people are actually moving both in and out of your market? How do you keep track of these people and make sure you're not wasting dollars? So we're going we're gonna to talk about that right off the bat because this is the foundation of everything you should be focusing on if you're using any data to mine or any data to, to, to use for your marketing and advertising efforts. So we really, one of the questions you need to ask yourself is, if I'm using my data, first and foremost, I should be looking in an area that my data supports where I should actually be connecting with my customers. One of the things that we do uh, at Team Velocity is focus very hard on not just looking at a dealer's raw data that's in their DMS, but really filtering that out to make sure that first and foremost, we have an area that defines where we want to be held accountable and where we want to make sure we're spending the dealer's money. And the first thing that we do with this data is to be able to provide that all important return on investment and an average cost for sale. If you're working with a company now that's using your data to, to market on your behalf, this is the first thing you should be asking them is where is the area that you're going and how far out are you going and what can I expect if you're going to use my data and use your marketing program for return on investment? Because what we want to do is not all areas are created the same. For example, this is a Ford dealer in Orange, California that has a lot of opportunity within their database. They've got about 162 customers that have sold year to date within this one zip code. They've got a substantial amount of service customers in this zip code. Overall in their database, they still have some, some customers that are lost within there, about 810. And the bottom number is the amount of same brand Ford owners that live in that zip code. So there's a lot of opportunity that they can go market into this, mar into this area and it makes sense for them. It's kind of like a, if you use an analogy of a fishing hole, if you were out to go fishing in a big lake, you'd want to go to the place where all the fish are biting and make sure you have the right bait and the right tackle. Conversely, there's lots of competition in everyone's market. So you've got to be fairly focused and centered on the area that you want to spend your dollars in. Because does it really make sense that even though someone has bought a car from you over the last three, four, or five years that live out of the density of the market where you should be spending your money, do these people in the outliers, should you be spending money to talk to them and try to convince them to come back primarily when they live very far away from you? And in the first case, if they bought a car from you, drove past three or four of their dealerships. The answer to that is, in our book, using data, just from an outset, not very likely because you can see here that although this Buena Park zip code is just a few miles away from this dealership, historically they have not done very well. So it shows us that people who live farther out of a certain area um, don't have a tendency to ever come back. So first and foremost, make sure you define an area that you want to be, um, you know, that you want to spend your money in. Second of all, you need to identify the people within that market, that certain area that you need to market to, because not all prospects are created the same. 
So if you're going to use your data, you should probably be using a company that will enhance that data uh, with outside information, things like vehicle values, vehicles in operation, OEM data, incentives, and then not in addition to your own DMS data, but also then you want to make sure that you do some filtering, like do they still own the car? What's their activity level within my dealership? Have they been back recently or have they not been back within the past five, six years? What about demographics of those consumers? Because believe me, when you look at your data and you start picking out the cream of the crop, those people out of 10 to 20,000 people have bought a car from you, there's a certain percentage, about 25 to 30 percent, that you can model as your best customers. These are the folks that paid a little more for the car, they didn't grind you on price, they service frequently, they probably purchased a couple of cars from you, um, they might have referred a few people. You can start to see, see trends within your own data and use that information if you're going to go out and do conquesting because it's not really um, effective to just go out and say, someone owns a Ford, I'm a Ford dealer, I'll go market to them. So we have a process in place that allows us to determine through all this filtration if they're actually good people to contact. And lastly, when it comes to data and you're working with your data, because again, as you're going to see, this should be the foundation of everything you do from a marketing and advertising standpoint when it comes to your data, is how clean is that data? Meaning, do these people meet two qualifications if we get through all of the, all the filtering? Number one, do they still live in my perfect market or the market I want to area that I want to advertise into? If they don't, as we've seen and we know just, you know, our gut will tell us people that live farther away probably won't come back. So do you remove those out to eliminate some waste as well? But most importantly, are people still in the vehicle? Do they still own the vehicle? And oddly enough, if you're working with a data company or a marketing company that's using your data, simply ask them, do the people still own the cars? Because one of the things that we have found when we add this filter, um, it removes anywhere from 30 to 50, for these two filters, 30 to 50 percent of the waste. More so, they should be able to provide you with a list of all those individuals who no longer own vehicles. Because believe it or not, you probably have within your DMS about 30 percent of the people that you believe to be actively servicing in your service environment or active customers they've been in once in the last 12 months no longer own the vehicle. So ask yourself, am I getting a list, an updated list on a daily, nightly basis of the people? If you just look at this example, I pulled this um, just yesterday morning from one of our dealers. The first example there, Martha Ann, she was in on December 28th and had her via her Ford Escape uh, uh, serviced, but guess what? On January 1st, there was a new registration. So she got it serviced probably to sell the car, sold it quite, quite, quite right away. So this dealership without this type of a filter would be spending money if they were using their database to be marketing to these individuals. So ensure that you have that. There's also, you should ask the question, how many other people did you remove and why? So ask your data company, can you show me who were duplicates, who lived outside my market, who had return mail, who we should we not contact, who had a registration change, and then also you should be asking, how are you appending my data if you're using big data to enhance my database? Do we have address again, uh, appends, email appends? Did someone change or, or is using a more frequent email? How about phone numbers? How about VIN explosions? And if you're like a lot of dealers today where you own multiple franchises and or multiple stores in a, in a marketplace, are you suppressing one database against the other so you're not over communicating and wasting money? Now the reason that we talk about this um, and really want to focus on it because you really want to break it down to the individuals and who they are and what they look like so that you can provide proper messaging using technology today, as you will see, to talk to each one of these individuals based upon where they're at and from an equity position, where they're at from a servicing position and activity level within the store. But most importantly, you want to cleanse your data, not just to get to this point, but you want to make sure you eliminate that 30 to 50 percent of waste in there because if you're not, do you have a BDC that makes outbound phone calls? And if the answer to that is yes and you're using a list out of your DMS, think about that. About 30 percent of the time they're reaching someone who doesn't own the car. Do you use some sort of direct mail or targeted mail program? If that's the case, 
are you mailing to people who no longer own the vehicle and have little chance of coming back? Again, we're trying to help you learn how to save money by eliminating waste. Are you using an equity mining tool? Again, these are all based upon customers that are in your database. Most of the tools today are set up for outbound phone calls, individual salespeople within the organization making phone calls to people that seem to be in an equity position, but if they don't own the car, it's very difficult to convince that person to come back and buy another. So once we have done the filtration, and once we've built a base of data, now how do we use that along with other tools to communicate to customers? So the first thing we want to do is break our customers down and show us who our best prospects are. Those would be by active, customers who bought from us and have actively serviced within the last year, because they need to have one message based upon what they're driving today, the payment that they have, their equity level, if any, and their activity. We need to also talk to those customers who have been lost. They bought from us, but they haven't been back for a while. Again, a different message will go to that individual. And of course, you're going to want to go after after Conquest customers who look like your best customers and model after the demographics of the best customers that you do business with now. And you'll look across the bottom there, each or across there, each one of these individuals is driving a different vehicle. So what's relevant to Jody Schuyler driving a Mustang and actively serves in your service department probably is not going to be relevant to Daniel Davidson who's driving an F-150 and neither one of the messages that you could send to those two people would be relevant to Keith Mooney, who's driving a Ford Focus. So we're going to talk about how we get the right customer, the right message that's relevant to them when they're ready to take action. One of the things we're going to talk about as well is the ability now to assign tracking identifiers to each individual within your database and Conquest customers outside of your database so you can follow them through when they take action on, on a website and know what kind of information they're looking at, who, what vehicles they're building, what services they're looking for, what coupons they're downloading, all without having to ever place a phone call, send a form. You'll get tons of, you can get tons of information in today's marketplace using some technology. So we've now just figured out where we want to go using data, who we want to talk to. The the second biggest challenge that we see in today's marketplace when it comes to marketing is how do we utilize a system that allows us to effectively get the information that consumers want, make it readily available across all the mediums, and what I'm talking about here is in the middle are our payment-based offers. In 2016, more than 92% of the people purchased on a payment. Every bit of research that we have seen, and you have seen as well, at the top of the list is people are concerned with how much will the car cost me on a monthly basis. Price is still very important as well, but people want to know what the payments are. So do you have a system in place that every single day that you can put your very best offers to every make, model, and trim level that you have in inventory out to the variety of mediums and push that out so when people are shopping they can find your information? And consider this, if you're a Toyota, Ford, Honda, it doesn't matter the brand, you've got multiple models with multiple trim levels. Do you have a system in place that enables you to put a payment on every single one of the vehicles that you have all the way down to trim level that's based upon how you want to price those vehicles? It's very challenging. So what we offer dealers and how we work with this is an automated system. I want to emphasize automated. This is not a manual process. This is not something that a dealer needs to go into, a sales manager, a general manager, a finance manager, or anybody in the dealership on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis if they do not want to. We utilize all national and regional incentives from the OEM, dealer cash, rebate, lease cash, lease terms. We can provide with multiple financing terms from 12 to 84 months. I mean, probably nobody financing on 12. But lease terms, 12 to 60 months. Your down payment requirements based upon the vehicle itself, your credit requirements, all by, make, all by model and trim within your dealership so that you can have a program that automatically updates every one of the payments on the vehicles in your, car, uh, in your inventory so that you have payments for everything, instantaneously know at any single time what, what uh, I, I'm afraid 
I apologize if the system's lagging a little bit. There it goes. Um, but you can have payments on every one of the vehicles in multiple forms so that when a consumer is looking for a car, whether they're online, whether you're mailing to them, whether you're sending them an email, whether they're digitally looking through a phone, through Google on their phone, they can find exactly what your best offers are. The other thing that we do to make them relevant, once we know what you want to charge for a vehicle, what we, once we know how you want to put a payment on that vehicle, we then make the offers relevant, and you should be asking yourself, am I making my offers relevant, or am I just every month advertising a few specials that we have on a couple, three or four core models that we sell. Because today's marketplace, people are searching for everything, and everything is relevant, everything that is relevant uh, gets responded to at about four times the rate of things that aren't relevant. So what we have developed is a technology called Upgrade Matrix. Upgrade Matrix is the ability to look at your trade cycles and your trade patterns at your dealership, figure out the people that are coming back and buying your brand by model, and then putting offers in front of those customers based upon the predictability of what they will buy, logically and statistically using the data. So in this case, we were looking at Jody Schuyler. She's driving a 2013 Mustang. At this particular dealership, in 62.9% of the time, when a customer driving a Ford Mustang SVT, her model, comes and backs and buys. She comes, they come back and they buy, believe it or not, another Mustang. Now, in 11.3% of the time, they will buy a Ford F-150, and 8% of the time, a Fusion, and 3.2% of the time, they'll buy a Focus. We have payments on all of those listed over here that we know. So, believe it or not, the information, the offers, the advertising, the emails, the mail, landing pages with their information all have the main offer as what she's most likely to buy. Now, Daniel's driving an F-150, and guess what? If this dealership, when you buy an F-150, 58% of the time, they're going to trade and buy another one. But 9.2% of the time, they'll drive a Super Duty, 5% of the time an Explorer, and 4.2% they buy a Mustang Coupe. So Daniel's message is going to look a lot different and be tailored and customized to what's relevant to him and his world, not just a core generic mail piece, email, ad that goes out with three or four core models with a base payment. Everything has been customized to these individuals. The other thing that we utilize technology for, and most importantly, is once we know what a dealer wants to charge for his vehicles in terms of payments, and you can see those across the top, and we know who the people are that we're communicating to, we can then dynamically, through the use of technology, again, nothing manual about this, upload this nightly into various sources by make, model, and trim so that we can push whenever anything changes, like an OEM incentive changes in the first week of the month, new lease payments come out, a dealer wants to charge something you know, he, he's got a tremendous amount of inventory of one model and wants to blow those out, can change those, or conversely, limited inventory on a very popular vehicle and wants to charge more for it. All done automatically by a set of rules that's built into the technology in our offer manager platform. But it also kicks this out on a nightly basis to every medium that most dealers are utilizing right now. From trad more traditional things in a sense from email and mail to website, but also through search as you're going to see through digital, through search social and display app. And lastly, we start talking about the biggest challenge that we think our consumers face, our customers face, is how are they cutting through the clutter that is the advertising world we live in today. It's not only just multiple device, there are literally thousands of messages that we as consumers see on a daily basis. It's not just the competition from your other local dealers. It's not just the competition from your manufacturers and the ads that they're running. It's not just the competition from the third-party intermediaries, the true cars, the, the car gurus, the auto traders, who want to separate you from your consumer to sell them back to you. 
it's all the other advertisements we see from American Express, United Airlines, Bed Bath & Beyond, Safeway, you name it, we literally see thousands and thousands of ads on a daily basis. So the biggest challenge we have right now is how is our message going to be seen? How are we going to be top of mind when it's time for the consumer to make a decision? So what we have pledged to do for all of our dealers is consistency, meaning utilizing technology that enables us to consistently take all of their best messages to their best prospects and consumers and spread them across a wealth of mediums that people are utilizing today to make buying decisions when it comes to purchasing cars and servicing cars. So we have a consistent look and feel no matter where you go. If you're looking for that Ford Mustang and the example that we've been using, you see a $364 payment. If you land on mail, email, a digital ad, a website, a retargeted display ad. Third, second thing in this, it's completely customized. Again, the relevancy is so important to a consumer I guarantee you if I'm asked this question right now today, you all your heads would nod. Do you think something that's relevant to you matters more? And the answer is yes. And then lastly, is it credible? Do I really believe that if I engage with this dealership that I can go down there and get what they're offering me when I show up? And the answer is if you have consistency and it's customized across the medium, and they keep seeing it wherever they go, and it's professionally done, OEM grading quality, clearly you're going to lend credibility to your program. So the mediums you should be utilizing, the technology you should have is one of those. Obviously we believe in very, um, you know, very firmly is, is, is targeted communications to individual households based upon who they are, what they're driving, and their activity level. So we'll go back to Jody Schuyler. Remember, Jody's driving a 2010 Mustang, $392 payment. She's got seven payments left. She's got some equity. She comes into our service department, and she's most likely to buy that Mustang when she comes back in. So we get very, and you should be using a company that has this type of technology so you get hyper-personalized. Variable images based upon what she's most likely to buy. Offers centered around what she's most likely to buy. Comparisons of where she's at right now in her payment to what she can be with the new vehicle. And of course, all kinds of manufacturers options and upgrades and all the new features that are on the vehicle. You should also be communicating them from a service standpoint because fixed ops is a huge opportunity for dealers and will continue to be. It's one where we kind of lack because sometimes we forget to communicate to our customers. But if you, have, if you know who's the customer, you know what their propensities are, and you know what their activity level is, you have the ability now today with technology to absolutely put offers in front of them that are meaningful. And meaningful to the dealership as well and mindful of your, um, and mindful of your, of your uh, revenue streams. Meaning we don't necessarily need to show an active customer a discounted 1995 oil change. We can predict that Jody's probably going to come back, so let's make her a nice special to keep her coming back, but don't need to give away the farm. Conversely, that Conquest customer or that lost customer probably needs a little more aggressive pricing. So all variable to the individual based upon where they're at. You should be utilizing email in a very automated and professional way. One of the things that, that, that is out there and available today are customized automated emails, again, based upon your ability to know who your customer is, know what their activity level is, know what their propensity is to buy their next, make their next purchase, and provide them with that information. Let's get into digital a little bit, because I know it's, a, it's, it's one of the things where people uh, have talked to us all, talked to us all the time about, it's becoming a, a digital world. So you need to ask yourself, are you really using technology at its, at its utmost to compete in the highly, highly competitive digital world? So the first thing you should know is, where your best prospects live and how you target those. So if we go back to the example of our data and figuring out that marketplace that we should be in, does it make sense to just draw a big circle around our dealership and do radius targeting when we know that statistically that the people that live outside of this green area probably won't be coming back to our dealership to make a purchase? Clearly we saw from the density of competitors most of those, those customers would have to drive past three or four other competing dealerships before they got to you. 
or does it make sense if you know where all of your customers is, the, your best customers, to geo-target around those, which is what technology can do for you. Automatically zoom in, basically put an umbrella over the heads of your very best customers. Because that's what we think makes a bigger difference. Do you have technology that enables you to upload your inventory with prices, with payments, real-time up-to-date on a nightly basis. As you saw earlier, one of the things we do is dynamically distribute this information. In this case, we load up to Google and Bing on a nightly basis, everything a dealer's got to offer, in order to provide you with the very best ads in order to compete in a digital world. Now, everybody has probably heard that Google has made it mandatory that everybody will have expanded ads by February 1st. Make sure your ads are actually containing the information because technology is out there to be able to do it. With the program that we implement on our dealer's behalf, our technology actually writes these ads based upon what the consumer is searching for in the marketplace and provides information that is relevant to the consumer based upon the ad gives them more information than they could possibly probably get anywhere else. But most importantly, we do this because Google and Bing recommended it because after testing ads that have payments in them, that have more information in them, that have features, that have the other models, that have great links to web pages, guess what? Click-through rates dramatically increase. So make sure that your ads are. I'm going to show you a tool in a few moments that you can all use to check and make sure. But you need to be competitive in a world when it comes to digital space because that's where everybody is shopping. You need to make sure that your ads, at a minimum, have the vehicles that people are looking for and should offer them. You will, if you just take a look at some of the ads that are in the marketplace, you will see what we mean. For example, this is a dealership I ran, just checked for the ad this morning. Here was a 2017 Ford Mustang lease. You can see the the difference between a very good expanded ad with a tremendous amount of information and what the competition is doing. I will simply ask you, if this is your dealership and you're in spot two or three with that type of an ad, which ad do you think will get connected with the consumer the most, both on a desktop and with a mobile phone where the majority of customers are shopping these days? So you should be using technology to produce your ads because if it's left to somebody who has to write these types of ads, they just don't do it. Most importantly, you should be landing people on landing pages that are dynamically created when someone searches for something. So we have a platform that allows an ad to be clicked through and landed on exactly. So as you see here, that ad for that 2000 17 Ford Mustang lease included a payment for 364.88. Guess what? The landing page has the payment of 364.88. If you're ever wondering why people bounce off of your website, it's really simple, folks. It's speed to load and information that lacks. People today, you and I included as individual shoppers and buyers of, of things, do not wait around or waste time if we cannot get the information that we want. You know who else knows this? Of course, Google and Bing know this. One of the things that they, you should be using as well is you should be utilizing technology in a highly competitive digital world to make sure you're not underpaying or overpaying for any particular ad. We utilize a real-time automated bid and budget management system that enables us to change bids every 30 minutes in a marketplace. The time that we've spent on this phone call, which is roughly 35 minutes, we've probably changed 15,000 bid adjustments across our dealer's platform. We do about 60,000 plus a day, depending upon the hour and the time. You can check this yourselves. Look at your AdWords accounts. See how often your ads are changed and updated and your bids are adjusted. If you have a set it and forget it, I'll put a max CPC, a cost per click, on a certain ad budget, an ad category, or an ad, you may be missing out. 
You may be paying too much. You need to make sure you utilize this. And there's resources that you can go to. There's many good partners that Google and Bing support in the marketplace. Clearly, we happen to be uh, one of five companies that both Google and Bing recognize as being elite and premier partner channel partners. But the good news is, is that these two entities don't hide anything from everybody else who's hanging ads on their network. They monitor them all. They look at them all. They 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 want to make sure that people are or or the people that are good are doing it. Um, do it right. They see billions of searches every single day. This is where your money is being spent. You should listen to these two companies because they will tell you exactly how to do it. They don't tell us anything different than they tell everybody else. They just say, look it, we see billions of ads served up every single day. Here's the best way you should do it. And you know what they say? It works like this. Do you, when someone searches for something, in this case a Ford Mustang, do you serve up an ad that has relevant information that is both compelling and most importantly will get them to click through. If you can build ads that are compelling with information, you're going to get a high click through rate. Trust me, you will. Do you have an ad for every single vehicle that you have in inventory with a payment configured multiple ways by lease and or finance and or by an interest rate and or by just total price? I'll show you how you can check that in just a moment. Most importantly, do you land them on a page that gives them and supports the information that they really started to look for? I looked for a Ford Mustang lease. I got an ad with a lease payment in it. I landed on a page that was dynamically created with all that information. And what does Google and Bing say if you do that? Guess what? You will lower your cost per click. Because we want our customers, as Bing and Google call them, they're, they're their customers. You and I are their customers. We want our customers to have the greatest experience. And if you create a great experience, we will reward you significantly by lowering your overall, by lowering your cost per click. Therefore, extending your budget, lowering your overall ad cost, your advertising budget. Get more bang for your buck. Call it whatever you want. They will reward you. Conversely, if you're with a company who doesn't do it well, you will pay more. It's just a fact. Because if you're not going to do it well, it's not they say you won't show, it's just you're going to show you it's going to pay more, which increases your ad cost and decreases your effectiveness. So you can start to see why using technology in order to produce this right here, the ad itself, there's no way humanly possible a digital analyst working for a digital marketing company can create ads on the fly. Us too. By the way, we used to be in the same boat. The only way we figured out to do it was invest in our own technology that enables us to write ads basically on the fly that support search phrases that are meaningful with information and land them dynamically on a page that, that, that served up, that converts at about four times higher than a dealer's website. And we get good cost per click. Ask your company, how well are we doing? If you're with one of the big companies, that are in the channel partners with Google or Bing, they know these numbers. We have a very low cost per click in, compared to our competition. The reason being is we just took the model that Google said and Bing said to do, we put it in place using technology to get extremely high click through rates and a much lower cost per click for our customers. And don't take my word for it. Again, this is about how technology can help you improve overall with your marketing. Use the tools that are out there in the marketplace today. If you have any questions at any time, how well you're doing with your ads, test my ads with Google. You go to the preview tool, fairly simple, look and see. I would recommend you test this every single day. It doesn't hurt your, it doesn't hurt your click throughs, you're not searching through Google, has no impact whatsoever, doesn't cost you anything. And then most importantly, test your site. As a matter, remember what I said earlier, speed and content are what keep or make people bounce off your site. Check your site. If you have anything less than about 90 across the board over here, you need to contact somebody and say, I need to get this faster, especially on the mobile site. When we do these site tests, you can see 
These are typically in the 40s and 50s in speed. They're very poor. If you find yourself in this position, call your website provider if you're landing people on your website on the mobile site and please get it faster. You're just costing yourself money. Let's move on to display with digital. If you're spending all that money up front, you're doing it right, and you're getting people to click through and they're looking at information, are you serving up ads and retargeting them? But are you retargeting them based upon what they looked at? Do you dynamically create display ads and retarget people based upon what they're looking at? You should. The technology's there. Same thing with social from a digital standpoint. This is where data comes back into play as well. Facebook enables you to put some very good information out there, but are you utilizing your data, integrating that with Facebook, or, there we go, are you integrating that with Facebook's database to figure out exactly if your customers are in there, and if they're in there, are you marketing them the same ways that you would if you were going to mail them, if you were going to email them, if you were going to serve them an ad? Are you, are you putting relevant information in front of a person based upon their ownership and their activity level? You should. It's available to you. It's hard to do on your own, but if you implement some technology that's out there, it's a very effective way to, to, uh, to utilize these mediums. And then lastly, not lastly, but from a side, what are you doing from the consumer experience that's going to enable them to get all the information that they want? So we utilize a two-front experience for the customers. If we don't know who a customer is for a dealer, and we land them from a Google ad or a Bing ad or a Facebook ad, we land them on what we call the front door of a fairly generic landing site. But once you get in there, you get all the information. But if we have that tracking number that I mentioned earlier associated with a customer, a very important customer, someone who's bought a car from you, someone who's serviced from you, shouldn't you offer them a little different experience? We believe you should because you have all of their information. So you should be setting up an experience for your consumers that will keep them from going other places, like a true car, for example, where the transparency of information is so clear, that's why they go to them. Well, we believe you should give them all that information. So if I know Jody Schuyler, and I know she's driving that 2010 Ford Mustang, I know she's an active customer, she was just in last May, I know she's got seven payments remaining on her, on her three, with $392, she's got $3,300 worth of equity, Guess, and I know what she's most likely to buy, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to serve her a page that puts all of the vehicles through update matrix that she's most likely to purchase, about 90% of probability. A Mustang and a X150 is a Steelers and a Fusion and a, and a C-Max there in this case. I'm going to offer a bonus offer. I've got vehicle specials that are completely tailored to her needs. I've got service coupons, again, completely tailored to her needs. There's no reason in today's marketplace that you put generic coupons up, service coupons. Number one, it costs your money. Your service managers hate them because it's not needed. There's technology out there that enables you to put, put exact relevant information in front of consumers. Really, this is like having an Amazon experience. I, want, I know that almost every one of you shops online. I happen to be an Amazon Prime member myself. When I go to Amazon and I log in, it says, welcome back, Jim. Hey, by the way, you recently purchased this, this, and this, and people, we thought you might like this. We also know that people that bought these things also like these things. It's a different experience every time I go back based upon relevant things that I've been purchasing. That makes sense in our buying a book, buying anything Amazon sells, Netflix. Why don't you do it in your dealership? There's technology out there that will enable you to do it. You should be doing it. It's expected from your consumers. And of course, tracking. How are we going to track all this information? How are we going to know if this is effective? We put in an opportunity dashboard for our dealers to track everything a consumer does. By the implementation of that little tracking number, we can see where individuals go, when they go to their websites, the information they look at, without ever submitting a form or calling the dealership or walking into the dealership. I know more about that customer than anybody else. For example, Kremen Peters was in this, is a customer. He financed his, his F-150 for 36 months. He has a payment of 523. He's got 12 payments left. He's been in the vehicle two years. You're saying, oh, that's just an equity mining tool, Jim. Yeah, it is kind of. Equity mining is pretty easy. 
Only so many variables. Here's what's not so easy. Peter on January 12th logged into his portal and look what he did. He looked at an expedition, an explore, an explore, an explore, an explore, another explore. Here's the stockman. He looked at five different explorers and an expedition. Do you think maybe Kremen wants another car? That's a hand raiser. I printed a, he printed a bonus offer. He viewed more inventory. He was last in on the, 16, on the 22nd. He's got tremendous amount of equity. I can see at a quick glance how quickly I can save this guy money. Do you think this is the kind of information that would be useful to you on your daily basis? Of course it would. This whole screen is filled up with people over the last 30 days, 918 of them that were in the dealership that could have purchased a brand new car through the service drive. 895 people who had a portal engagement, meaning they went to their portal and looked for something. 56 that got offers, 94 that had a form, 672 inbound phone calls are tracked through here as well. Very few of these people, these guys have not called the deal, these, these, most of these people have not called the dealership. The sex center in 72 did, but that's a completely separate, different 672. If you are going to work a dashboard, if you are going to work an equity mining tool, Number one, we know who Peter is. We know what he's driving. He has been onto a portal site and looked at inventory. And I can, by the way, he's logged in 21 times since we started communicating with him. 21 times. This is the information you need because technology supports it in the marketplace today. You're almost blind without it. If you're in your dealership today thinking, I've got a BDC and we're making outbound phone calls based upon the fact that someone might be in an equity position, 30% of the time, those people don't own the car. Think about that. Average is six times to get a hold of someone in today's marketplace. What a waste of time. Versus going down a list of people who 223 people since Friday of last week over the weekend were on, their, on here raising their hand saying, I want to buy, buy a car. We know exactly who these people are. We know exactly what we sent to them. So there's no ambiguity. I could call Kremen up right now and say, Kremen, not only do I believe you're in the market, but did you get the last piece of mail we sent? That's email the digital ad you requested. And lastly, technology that can help you immensely. It's called call pop. It's when someone calls into your dealership, you don't know who they are. We have the ability to append that data instantaneously by looking up and cross-reference if they have a phone number in your database. And again, populating that call into your dashboard so you know exactly who it is. You're very lucky if you get a salesperson to get a first name an email address, but how about if you call populated every single time someone came into your dealership and you knew exactly what they were driving, exactly their equity position, exactly their service history, their financial. And oh, by the way, we can listen to all the phone calls in real time and actually put in the conversation between your salesperson and the customer so we don't miss a thing. And lastly, Technology to work in your dealership. These are all about tools for tracking and calling and so forth and kind of marketing. But marketing doesn't stop with just sending something out to a customer or serving up an ad or retargeting a customer or making an outbound phone call. Marketing really continues as a sales process when the customer gets there. How quickly can you get to a customer and show them the ability to upgrade from their current car and everything that they could upgrade into simply by clicking a button on a tablet and showing that to your customer. This is all technology that's out there. And of course, reporting, not going to spend a tremendous amount of time. I will just simply say, if you are working with any companies today where you do not see daily effectiveness of your marketing and return on investment, clearly weekly with updates, including who in the dealership is taking ownership and responsibility, how effective your campaigns are, how productive your digital marketing is working, and of course, drill down on a monthly basis, you're probably in need of, of some help. Because you should be looking at these things daily. Because they change that fast and it's just that important. So really what we kind of recap with here is you're using your data, you should be. I hope that you can see now that through the use of technology that you can be able to tell how many customers you have and are they the right customers to be messaging to. 
how you can effectively use technology now to get a consistent message across all the mediums you should be using and more. But you've got to be able to cut through that clutter. And if you don't have something that's consistent and it's customized and it's credible, it's very difficult. And there's technology that's out there today to help you do that. And I hope you were able to see some of that with, uh, with some of the examples we've shown and shared with you today. Uh, obviously, these are the, top, the, the topics we were looking for. And I'm not going to go over through these all again. We're right at the end of uh, kind of our, our 50 minutes. So I'm going to open up to questions and answers. And, uh, and then I've got a little bit of information very quickly, about 30 seconds once we get done. So Brian, if we've got any questions, um, let me know. Yes, yes, actually we do. Um, Jim, that was a great presentation. Uh, our first question is, do you think it's still necessary to use all of the auto searches? AutoTrader, Cars.com, CarGurus. Internet search has changed so much over the last nine years, and I'm not sure if it's still necessary to keep all three paid sources. That's a fantastic question, and one I'm posed with uh, most days of the week. We have kind of outsourced uh, for a long time, dealers just weren't good at the digital game and, uh, and have, still have a lot of questions about what's a great digital strategy. Uh, so the answer, the short answer to that question is, um, in the past, yes, probably, but now there's so much available to you with a good digital partner with dynamic ads, uh, inventory loaded nightly, and your ability to compete in a fairly significant manner with the third-party buying ser services, because keep this in mind. The one of the things that Google and be, get, being look at is connecting someone online isn't just about who pays the most. That has a little bit to do with it, but not a tremendous amount. It's how who has the actual end product. Auto Trader doesn't have the car. Car Gurus doesn't have the car. You have the vehicle, so you have a distinct advantage in that. Google Bing wants to connect the buyer with the seller in, in, in the ideal situation. My advice to every uh, dealer client that we work with is do an evaluation. First, do you have a good, do you have a good uh, pre-owned and new digital strategy in place? Check that box off and um, then measure and monitor the effectiveness of what you're getting out of the money you're spending for your, your, uh, your pre-owned search and new search and see. I think what you'll find is that you could remove one or two of those services depending on who they are. All right. Um, Jim, our, our next question is, is the offering compliant without a disclaimer? <coughs> the, uh, excuse me, the ad, the, the ad itself? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, they're completely. It's just yeah, you're completely compliant, especially if you're landing. One of the things that our offer manager product does, the solution, is it automatically builds in, pre-builds in OEM, every state compliant disclaimers by lease and finance, APR down, everything's in there. So it's basically it's completely automated. We've already ran that past every state attorney general and every manufacturer to ensure that. But if you're just talking about purely about the ad itself, you don't need to have a disclaimer in a in a, in a search ad. All right. In Our next question. This this one came in um, when you were talking about you know check checking the, the checking your site and checking your ads. Um, it says, how do you check your site? Very simple. If you go to it's actually test my site think with Google .com, but just Google test my site speed with Google. It'll take you to a link that is test my uh, you know test my site think with Google. Simply type in your URL. It'll take you about literally um, 15 seconds, and it will show you, uh, you know, the three levels: your website friendliness, your desktop friendliness, website friendliness, mobile speed, and desktop speed. The big one to be concerned with is your mobile speed. If you are less than 90, you uh, you need to do some work. All right. Um, our next question is, what about items seven and eight? How does your program track all marketing efforts? It's a great question. We didn't get into, uh, you know, the dashboard is, 
a very dynamic piece of, uh, of equipment, basically. But, but here's what we do. Because we associate a, a, an identifier with every one of the consumers, and because we have all of the dealer's data, we're able then to basically, if they, if they, they take any action, because we've got that tracking, we call it a PIN, a personal identification number, but we've got that tracking PIN on all of them, it loads automatically whenever they take action into, into the dashboard itself. So if I were to go back and show you all the icons, and I could actually go in and, and if whoever this is, if you'd like to send me your information, um, in about five minutes you can see how everything gets tracked, it, down to a digital ad and a digital call as well. Because we have the ability through call pop, obviously, to, to determine who they are, but also the ability to see and tie them to a sale or a service transaction at the end of the month. All right. Um, Measure, monitor, uh, um, same thing. Uh, dashboard, again, showing a single or a couple slides of that tool for time's sake is, is a necessity. Uh, however, in the, in, in the real world and looking at, at that tool, you will clearly see uh, how effective the market. We also have another tool that's in there called the customer journey that tracks every piece of communication that ever gets sent to a consumer uh, and including digital ads if they click on those um, at what time and where and what that you know, how that contributed to a sale or a service transaction. Okay. Oops. Got a bunch of them come in here real quick. Um, Jim this, this, this question um, is actually from Jim. Uh, distribution of marketing dollars in percentage. Electronic, TV, radio, print, local events with the community. So I think the question is, how should I allocate my budget? That's pretty, yep. uh, that's pretty a couple of those are pretty easy. Uh, the digital, Google's pretty good and Bing are pretty good about how, helping you predict through their uh, keyword planner tools kind of the activity level and, key, and relevant key searches for your brand and products in the marketplace, depending upon, you know, and you can, you can set, again, you can set that based upon a, a geography. Uh, so they'll, they're, from a digital standpoint, they're pretty good about showing you that. You can, you can, you can figure out your budget uh, at that point. I would 100% I would recommend that your 80% plus impression share overall uh, with, with New model searches, uh, new inventory, uh, being up there as well, because that's really where the transactions are taking place. Is when people have actually decided that I'm searching for a 2017 Honda Accord LX, they pretty much decided they're ready to buy. So make sure that you you just look at it'll tell you how much budget you're going to need roughly, and you can adjust it on a monthly basis. It's pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, in terms of traditional media, and that's still a that's still kind of a, a, a crapshoot in terms of it's tough to measure ROI and what you get out of that. But typically what we see with dealers, with the things that we presented today, we know that you need to have a blend in your dealership. Uh, and you kind of, without coming in and doing a complete market analysis for you, uh, we would typically recommend, um, and again, you've got you've to stay within the boundaries that your dealer principal, your GM, or your, you know, whoever has decided how you're going to allocate actual money. Is it a percentage of gross? sales, uh, uh, or is it on a per car basis? You know, most dealers try to stay within a, you know, a cost per sale, a, a, a per retail unit of you know, $400, $600, depending upon their market. Again, that's a generality. Some dealers are a little lower than that. So if you start looking at, at you're selling 100 and, you know, 200 cars and you're at you know, 300, you want to save $300 per retail unit, you know, you're going to have about a $60,000 budget. For a lot of this targeted stuff and database marketing and digital marketing, you're typically probably going to be wanting to spend, you know, third, about 50 to 60 percent, depending upon your opportunities. That's the really good thing about using your data as well. You will clearly know once you drill down to it. Just like with 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 Google and Bing and digital, you'll know exactly how much money, how many opportunities you have. So you know exactly how much budget you need to allocate. All right. How can I set up? An in dealership presentation, and this says Orange County, California Ford dealer. Thanks for the question, Sean. Uh, just uh, my information will be shown here. You can go ahead and email me, and we'd be more than happy to take care of you. As a matter of fact, um, here's my information as well. 
one of the things I was going to say, because we kind of focused, you know, we kind of got a little deeper in, into digital because it, look, at, let's face it, it's a very, very good medium to be playing in now, but a very, um, it's not difficult. It's just there's a lot of information that's going around today about what's effective, what should my cost per click be, what should my click through rates be, and impression shares, and kind of normal numbers out there, but it gets a little deeper than that. So one of the things we always say uh, to dealers is that, you know, make sure that you're, you think you're getting the best. So we've got this little digital checklist here, and it also gives you the test my site with Think with Google and test my ads with ad preview. Uh, you should be looking at your ads and saying, so anybody who wants this, I'd be more, well, it'll be on the, it'll be on the presentation, but anybody wants this, I mean, with no other game, I mean, I'll be more than happy to send it out to you. So there's my information. Anybody that would love to contact me and, and get some more information, I'd be more than happy to send it to you. Yeah, actually, um there, there, we've had a few people that have, have put their emails in, into the uh, the question, and, and I, I for those of you that have done that, I, I will pass those along to Jim so he can he can reach out to you. Um, it looks like it looks like that's all of our questions. Um, okay. Everybody, this is this is this is Brian with Auto Success again. I, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time today, and I'd especially like to thank Jim for taking the time to share all this information with us. Um, if, if you're going to be at an ADA, you, you can reach Jim at, at uh, his booth, which is 3481. If you're not going to be at an ADA, um, all of you are going to get a thank you. You're all going to get a thank you for attending email from me. So if, if, if you happen to be driving or something and you can't take down Jim's information, um, just respond to that email that, that you'll get from me thanking you for attending, and I will, I will uh, I'll send those to Jim. Or if you have any questions and, and you don't, and you're, happen to be you know, somewhere where you can't, write down his information. Uh, Jim, would you mind sharing your email address with everybody? Yep, it's uh, jgreen at teamvelocitymarketing.com. If you're still online, that's just J G R E E N like the color, and teamvelocitymarketing.com. Okay. Um, yeah, we've actually, I've, we've, I've got several people that, that have, have put in their email address, and I'll send those to you right afterward. Um, yeah, everybody, uh, Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Please, please join us for future webinars. And if there's a topic that you'd like to see covered or a person that you feel would be you know, a valuable person for us to have on one of these, please let me know. You can contact me at brian, B-R-I-A-N, at autosuccessonline.com. Or you can go to Auto Success Webinars, the group on Facebook. Or you can just go to our website and, and call in and, and ask for me. Um, Jim, is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience before we let them go today? Uh, no, I just want to say thank you to everybody. I appreciate you uh, joining the call. And if you have any questions, just email me. And if you happen to be down in, in New Orleans next week, booth 3481, come by, stop by. You can see a lot of this stuff and, uh, in real time. And, and especially if any of those that, that have questions on the dashboard, I, it's, a, it's a phenomenal tool to see live. And uh, you'll get a much more uh, understand of that. So thank you very much. And everyone have a great day. All right. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye.